Okay, hey, thanks for joining this presentation, actually, that recorded presentation. Uh, my name is Michael Jäger, and I would like to talk to you a little bit more about the Fossology Project. First of all, I, I may give you some, some general introduction about the Fossology Project and um, to tell you a little bit more about what's special about it and um, what happened recently in the project. So Fossology is obviously a tool in, in the area of open source license compliance, and it has been there for quite a while. It has been published initially in 2008 by Hewlett Packard. And in 2015, it uh, turned into a Linux Foundation collaboration project. It's a Linux application, so you can't directly install it, natively install it on Windows or Mac OS X. You need to, to have a container maybe, or uh, maybe have a virtual machine running Linux. And it implements a couple of tasks which are important for open source license compliance. Um, obviously, that's about scanning for licensing for license relevant statements. Um, that is about scanning for copyright statements or authorship statements. It can also scan for email addresses. An important topic is also trade compliance when it comes to compliance with open source components. So it can look for export control and customs. That's what the acronym stands for, uh, custom statements. And then there is, uh, of course, the ability of what has been scanned and analyzed and looked at in the Fossology application to, to generate that uh, and as forms of documentation um, that can be text documents, that can be word processor documents, um, which can be read, for example, with LibreOffice, or you can export and import SPDX files. SPDX is an acronym which stands for Software Package Data Exchange, and it defines on how uh, metadata about files and software packages can be exchanged, and that's that one one larger area of that is license compliance, licensing information, copyright information. Another area, for example, would be vulnerabilities, right? So Fossology can do all this, and there are also other tools scanning for licenses and exporting SPDX. So what's so special about Fossology? After all the years working on licensing and understanding licensing and open source software, um, the, the users and the community of Fossology has seen that overview is actually key for efficient working on open source packages. An overview basically means to be able to, to navigate to the, to the package or open source software's hierarchy, file hierarchy, look into folders, and at the same time, aggregate found licensing information. So you quickly can identify individual files. Aggregation is super important for, for finding the critical licensing statements quickly. And if you are at the single file view, um, Fossology helps you even more by highlighting license relevant statements. So on the screenshot, you basically see two things here. Um, you see that in gray, regular expressions hinting at the particular license have been highlighted. And you see in brown that license relevant keywords have been found. Sometimes you only find keywords and Fossology is not able to determine the licensing. And sometimes um, the gray highlighting pointing at a particular license um, is, is actually very helpful. So the idea is you can look at licensing statement and conclude it um, on, on a fine grained level on every file and you can navigate up and down in the file of all the hierarchy. So um, you might wonder like looking at individual files, is that even necessary? Well, it depends on your licensing um, conditions, right? It uh, like the conditions where how licensing is expressed. And Fossology is not really alone with it. Also in the SPDX standard, you see things like license concluded, um, which is obviously an expert um, verdict here on the file. And on the other side, you have license info and file, which like what the license has been found. And that comes because in some points you have maybe dual licensing, in some points, in some cases, you have licensing which was not written very well, so it's not, not really um, easy to understand what licensing um, has been actually intended here. Um, you have just unclear statements in terms of like it's written well, but um, you need to decide on, on some particular things because some points are let, left open. It depends on the domain how closely you need to look into the particular licensing in order to conclude a license. In some domains, software packages are licensed very clearly and very easily to find. And um, so you basically don't need to conclude anything maybe. And in some domain, it's just, it's just a, a very confusing and an expert is required to make a conclusion here. Let me at this point have a look on the Fossology application to briefly show you how, it's, how it looks like. 
if you if you have deployed phosology and serve to it and for example if you deploy using docker or vagrant probably that's the url you have to serve to um, it will start with this login screen if you didn't do anything on phosology the username and password will be the same both fossy in order to log in that's the main admin account and um, obviously something went wrong here and after you have successfully logged in it will show you the already done uploads on the server you can change your password of course if you like or the password of the admin user by going into admin users and then edit user account but this is not something we would like to do here i would like you to show the initial probably most important method to work with phosology and that's uploading a file a package archive from your local hard drive as you can see here in the upload menu different methods of bringing uploads to the phosology server are possible you can upload from a given url you can upload from a git server and even specifying the branch and svn is also possible i think still um, you can upload from a local server path like server phosology server is meant here and you can define maybe an incoming folder and upload files from there. In this case, just a very easy case, upload from file. The, all, all of these different methods look very similar because they start with choosing the file that you would like to upload. Um, you can tell Phosology to ignore um, version, uh, concurrent version system files. Um, you can have different settings for the visibility of the upload. And then we come to the, to the actual important part here to select different analysis method that should be applied on the upload. And for Sology, the application itself is not really bound to license compliance. For Sology itself is an application which unpacks an archive. It can do recursive unpacking, which is quite important because in open source packaging, you can find open source packages in open source packages that you would like also to unpack in order to look at its contents. And then for every file found in all the recursively unpacked archives, um, all the files are taken and individually sent to the analysis methods. It, it, it is in this case analysis methods um, about license compliance. So you can analyze it for copyright statements. You can analyze it for export control statements. You can define your own keywords and look at the files uh, if you find the own keywords. But it could be also different analysis methods, of course. For example, one module which recognizes programming languages. No one has contributed that so far, but it could be an, an interesting idea to analyze also on that. And Phosology has uh, three different analysis methods on licensing. It um, analyzes or tries to find licensing by text by text comparison, by using regular expressions and an SPDX license uh, identifier. So let's maybe talk a little bit more about that. Um, text by text comparison is very useful in order to identify a particular license. And if you are a license expert or a lawyer, you understand that if you need to make decisions on particular licensing, you need to have the exact text or need to understand what the exact licensing text ruling for this piece of software is. And in order to help you with that, Phosology is spotting differences between found text and reference text. And if there isn't any difference, you have 100% match of the license text from the database and the license text which has been found in the upload. And you are very safe that actually the license text found in the upload is the same that you have in mind and you have understood as a particular license. For lawyers, having that safety is very important. On the other side, it's obvious that this method only works on known licenses, right? If you don't have the license text in the database because it's new, Phosology won't find anything with this method. Maybe it will find parts of it because the license text is actually a newer version or a reused um, parts of existing licenses in licensing text to form a new license. But on the other side, you would like to have regular expressions and keywords defined in order to find all sort of license relevant statements. And um, that is what the second license analysis is doing, NOMOS. And it's actually very important that both, both of these things are present in Phosology. One, full text matches offer you a higher precision here towards the right to tell you really that this is the license text that you also understand as a particular license text 
found in an open source upload, and keyword and regular expressions find even unknown licensing statements, even own written licensing statements. Um, so you make sure that you don't miss anything in a particular upload. And then there was a third license analysis method, which was called OHO license analysis. I'm sorry, this year, scanning licenses using the SPDX license identifier. And what's the SPDX license identifier? I have an example here. The SPDX license identifier is used as a convention, as a proposed convention, which is um, which should precisely define the licensing ruling for a particular file. And it was found with all that scanning technology and analysis work um, applied to open source packages that the solution to reduce work in open source license um, analysis would be to, to precisely define the licensing at the source, at the published package in every file in a machine readable way. And that's actually the propose, proposal from reuse.software. And I find now that I have forgotten it. Um, so let me actually um, write the URL here um, so you can look it up. So that's actually the URL reuse.software. Um, we can also put this in a browser here, um, which um, that was a bad idea. Forget about this, um, which, um, which defines the reuse.software is an initiative to define how you should express licenses, licensing in a file. And, and um, if that's found in a file, Phosology should be actually able to recognize this as an SPDX license identifier statement. We could add a regular expression to NOMOS to identify SPDX license identifier statements. That's fine. But in the case of NOMOS, you don't know if it was based on keywords or uh, some, some regular expression or the SPDX license identifier that has led to the finding. And as such, it's, it's, it's implemented as a separate finding here um, as OHO license analysis, which allows you to, to tell Phosology precisely that if it's an SPDX license identifier, which has been found, don't let me review it. Actually, you can, but don't ask me for reviewing it, uh, but make a, make a conclusion automatically. Phosology has the section here, automatically, automatic concluded license decider, where the user can define to, a pro, uh, to apply license conclusions to files based on some rules which are obvious. For example, if Nomos and Monk um, find, both find the same set of licensing. If that's the case, uh, then um, obviously text by text comparison and regular expression have led to the same conclusion. That should be enough confidence in order to conclude a licensing. And as such, you have, you have the idea that if in a file, OHO finds an SPX license identifier and Nomos and Monk don't find anything else, um, like any, any further licensing statement, maybe further below because someone has, has copied or added some content and didn't adopt the SPDX license identifier, then an automatic conclusion should be done. And that is um, um, provided by Phosology to the users to actually save work. On one hand, you have, you have the ability to very precisely look into files and understand the licensing situation with three different license analysis methods. But on the other hand, you have a number of options to automatically conclude licensing um, when the cases are clear. And that means that you save work by automation and at the same time maintain a high precision um, with the level of reviewing license statements on a file by file basis or on a license statement by license statement basis. Let me, let me come to the next point here. Um, apart from how Phosology finds licensing, I have already mentioned that Phosology imports SPDX as um, it can also export SPDX, meaning that you have uploaded um, an open source package, have analyzed the licensing, did some conclusions, and then you export the SPDX file where um, it is written in which file, which licensing was found or which copyright statement was found. On the other side, importing SPDX means taking some analysis maybe from someone else, maybe even someone else has done with a different tool. And the import of the SPDX files in Phosology can have a number of use cases. For example, you receive an SPDX file by another party, um, by another organization or by another individual. 
and you would like to understand how well did you work on understanding the licensing situation of an open source software or of a software package. Then, given that you have the same software already um, applied to your Forsology server, uploaded to your Forsology server, you can also load the externally provided SPDX information and compare it. And that not only um, provides maybe sharing of analysis work, so someone could provide a central archive for SPDX descriptions and you could share that, but you, it means also that you can reuse existing analysis work and reuse is actually very likely because in the all day work with Phosology and with license compliance, it is very likely that you that you scan newer versions of a package that has been scanned before because your software develops, your dependencies develop, and it's very likely that you look at newer versions of already analyzed software. So if there has been already software analyzed by someone and this party provides an SPDX um, description of the analysis result, and it happens that you are about to scan a newer version of that component, you can reuse the existing work on your Phosology server and import the SPDX. I think the SPDX um, importability contributes very much to, to sharing license compliance data to reduce work between all, all of us concerned with analyzing open source software. And um, that, that is one larger feature. And another larger feature is about license obligations. Um, there is maybe um, as a background in the beginning, there is the term license obligation. Um, it means something like um, instructions for non-licensed experts about what um, needs to be done when using software on a particular um, on a particular license and using can actually mean also redistribution, right? So the the license tags were found some sometimes difficult to understand and people started to write obligations, meaning like, okay, if you have that license and you would like to redistribute software under it, then what does it actually mean um, for you as a software developer when redistributing it? And obligations can be also organization specific. Um, so maybe your organization has special ideas about how to implement obligations, how to meet the license obligations um, when um, defined uh, for a particular license. And there are also several organizations um, out there. For example, there's the Open Source uh, Automation Development Lab, the OSADL, um, which provides a set of um, generally written obligations. Um, there is the FINOS, an open source foundation in the financial area, which provides an open source handbook. Uh, there is GitHub, um, which um, has also provided the project Choose a License, where obligations can be found in a machine readable format. And Phosology lets you import and export licenses and then spreadsheet in a spreadsheet data layout uh, using the comma separated value file format. So you can first export maybe the existing database to understand the file format and which columns are there. And then depending on your source, you can import your obligation set. And now there comes the trick. If you, if you do an analysis of component and you determine licensing in this component uh, where you have also written obligations, like obligations in your database, then you can generate reporting and, and pass that over to your other members of your organization, telling them in more a natural form what they need to do with this particular open source software. So um, all these things happen on the UI and that's actually fine. But um, I think also nowadays we see more and more happening in the Phosology area, which is about integration. Basically, there are three, three main ways of uh, interaction with the Phosology server and integrating it with different other applications. There's the REST API, there is a FOSS driver Python library, and there are the command line tools that come when you install Phosology. So with the REST API, you have endpoints to interact with the Phosology server to manage folders, uploads, trigger scans and options, download reports, and so on. If you would like to, to have maybe a brief overview, look, look at the Phosology.org get started basic REST API call section um, to see how simple it is to interact with the Phosology REST API. Um, there is FOSS driver, um, a Python library, which basically allows you to remote control Phosology. And there are command line tools, also command line tools, which lets you execute all the individual 
functionality um, um, by command line, like um, execute by command line just the normal scanner on an upload, right? But please be aware that normals, for example, doesn't do unpacking for you. So you need to have an unpacked archive and then you can run normals on it. And um, the REST API is, um, you need to understand that on the REST API, you need to also to follow a particular flow. Um, so you can list folders and see what's there on the Forsology server. Um, you can trigger scan jobs, you can observe how the jobs are doing, and you can download different reporting, for example, SPDX. Um, you can have a docx for report download, and you can have readme's uh, license listing, and so on and so on. You can look at the basic REST API calls, like the URL that was given on the slide before, or of course, have a look at the complete REST interface documentation of Phosology. So far in, in summary, so maybe let's step back a little and, and have, a, have a brief overview on the, on the releases that were published in the past three or past uh, 12 months, like the past three releases. So we had uh, 3.6, which was basically bringing OHO um, to the Phosology code base um, with the ability to read the SPDX license identifier tags. Um, there was a huge change also under the hood changing from the SQL file to import the initial catalog of licenses to JSON, allowing it also for other parties to um, import licensing information, a license catalog that comes with Phosology. 3.7 brought improvements to the automated concluded licensing. Um, it, under the hood, a lot of changes were applied to be GCC8 compliant um, because the behavior of warnings has been improved, in quotes. Uh, no, it has been improved. Um, and another important thing with the uh, 3.7 is the REST API support for SW360. Actually, support was there before, but SW360, um, which is another open source software and Phosology, um, can work better together with uh, Phosology's version 3.7 because from that point on, Phosology provides more or better information about the job progress. And that's important for remote controlling it from the SW360 application. 3.8, the most recent release here, um, brought to the code base the software heritage agent. Under the hood, it was doing um, uh, schema changes to make sure that everything is UTF-8 in your Phosology database. That is, for example, in particular, uh, in particular important if you would like to run Phosology on AWS RDS, Relational Database Service. The improvements to the packages on the Phosology project have been done. So 3.8 is, is the most recent version. If you, if you would like to upgrade to the latest, make sure it's 3.8.1, actually. Let me talk to you a little bit about the most recent feature about the Software Heritage integration. So half, Software Heritage is an archive of published open source software. And um, it's... Uh, uh, the, the Software Heritage Organization itself is a foundation and other organizations can support it by, by donating to this foundation or become part of it. Or other organizations can even publish their own software using the Software Heritage archives. As far as I know, uh, or I understood this, uh, these works, um, is, uh, it's basically two work streams. One work stream is about to provide the Phosology for archiving published software. So you, we talk about a super huge archive here. If you imagine all the published software so far and providing it, so someone needs to develop the, 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 the actually server technology to provide the archive and be able to extend it. And the second thing is to provide the archive as in, 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 uh, in meaning that someone needs actually to host all that data. And if you talk about archive, it becomes obvious that it shouldn't be a single site. Uh, but there should be multiple nodes. So if there will be some event, some unfortunate event on one side, the archive is not lost. Um, for more information, um, you can check, of course, uh, the URL of the project. But the important thing for us in the Phosology project is that it has a REST API, right? And the use case for Phosology is that you can find out if a file is public already. And for open source project, that's likely very, very boring. But for mixed upload, you can easily distinguish published files from non-published files. You can even upload your own proprietary software to understand or make sure that all the files of your proprietary software are really proprietary and have not been published so far, right? Um, if, you, if they shouldn't have been published so far, because um, admitted proprietary, proprietary doesn't mean not published. So in, in general, it allows you to understand 
if a file has been published or not, meaning um, if it's not in the Software Heritage Archive, it's likely not published. Forsology uses the REST API and uses the SHA-256 checksum of files to exchange with the Software Heritage Server. It requires an internet connection, of course. And when we look at the Software Heritage um, functionality, um, then some more metadata is being pulled. Let me have a quick look here. Um, so I have uploaded a very small archive. It's the time tool you may know from your command line. It contains only a few files. Let me zoom out a little. And with the newer releases of Phosology, you have the Software Heritage uh, section here that you can click. And then it um, gives you a list of files and that all of them have been found also on the Software Heritage Archive. You can, you can switch over to the Software Heritage Archive and call the REST API directly. So this is uh, actually a GUI front end for the REST API call. So we have here the content call with the SHA uh, value. There is also a SHA1 value here. Um, there has not been an, a license found. It has been scanned with an older version of NOMOS. And so it's part of the Software Heritage Archive. We also pull the licensing information here from Software Heritage. Um, it's not really, it's not really super useful to have licensing information from Software Heritage while you can scan on its own. But we, we, we already implemented the ability to pull the metadata, um, um, to pull the metadata from the Software Heritage uh, server in order to um, be prepared when more metadata is being offered. Right now, it offers you this list. And if there would be a red dot, you would know this, this file likely has not been published so far. The Software Heritage implementation is actually a result of the Google Summer of Code Run 2019. And the credit, um, the person who has implemented it actually um, is uh, Sandeep. Um, so we are glad um, to, to, to have Sandeep contributed to the Software Heritage implementation. Sandeep now also volunteers as a mentor in the Google Summer of Code 2020 run. And that's also where I would like to switch to um, in some news about the open source community. So um, Forsology again has been um, granted as a mentoring organization for the Google Summer of, of Code and uh, runs in 2000. 20 uh, in 2020. Um, so in this year, three students have been awarded by Google um, with uh, the Google Summer of Code Stipend and have to uh, have applied to work on the Phosology project. So we are very lucky and thank you to the students and to Google actually. And the areas of working are one hand Atarashi to bring it to the Phosology and, and to let it better deal with uh, comments, uh, understanding comments better as separating out source code. I know there have been, there have been libraries uh, already um, implementing uh, comment recognition, but they were not working optimally in, for, for the cases. So that's what being worked on. And another area of uh, where is uh, work being implemented is um, the integration with the Grafana server. So Grafana is a, is a dashboard uh, server. It's also an open source project. And the idea is to implement uh, in integration with the Phosology server to allow monitoring of a Phosology server for all this non-basic US uh, metrics, right? The operating system metrics uh, that I regard as basic would be like free memory, uh, occupied memory, free disk space, and all these things are there. And you could do this with your Phosology server. But maybe you would like to find out more like uh, how many jobs are running, um, how many uploads have been uh, uploaded, how many files are in the archive and all these things. So notably here also that um, big thanks to Nicola from Orange and also Bartosz from Orange, um, who are also um, mentoring this um, Google Summer of Code uh, student working, working on this part. Um, if you look also where uh, changes have been done, except from the core project for Sology, uh, it's the REST clients. So there is a REST client for Phosology. Um, actually, there are three of it. One is a shell script, one is a Python library, and then there is a .NET correlate, meaning that you can also compile it on Linux, not, not really necessarily um, uh, run it on, on a Windows machine. So these are a client implementation to interact with the Phosology REST API. You will find them on GitHub in the Phosology group. And um, I would like to, to, to also point out that uh, there is um, Phosology Slides, which is a very nice package um, with a collection of slides. It uh, has enough material to run a one-day course of Phosology. Um, and we encourage everyone 
um, to make your own presentation for Fossology, introduce the project if you like it. And uh, the slides are licensed, by the way, with uh, GitHub CC um, BIOS A4.0, just like this presentation. So you can modify it and redistribute the modification, just given that you maintain the particular license. So this is it. Um, I hope you liked the video recording. I hope you liked the presentation. Um, please don't hesitate to write to my email address or contact me by any other um, channel uh, if you would uh, like to ask a question about Fossology or make suggestions. If you like Fossology, consider to start our project. Um, and I think then this is it. Thanks for tuning in. And I hope I will be around in the chat at the time you're hearing this. Have a, have a nice day. Bye. Cool. Um, so I, I have this um, telephone here to support audio. Um, if there would be any questions, uh, I think I'm on this um, track open source project updates in Slack, like uh, beginning with two. And you can also ask questions here in the Q&A, um, in the Q&A section. Um, thanks for the nice feedback, actually, Ashkat. Um, and I'm seeing that I have two audio sources now. So audio on that can work. OK. I can put away the phone and notice that there is a lag. I think the one from from the previous sessions, um, it is a little bit sluggish to answer questions here on the Q and A. So one person asked, "Is there is a best practice uh, to use Fossology together with Yocto?" Um, there is probably, but I cannot point out very well to it because I'm not aware of um, how currently colleagues are using it. Um, I've heard that some are using um, Fossology or have integrated um, Fossology. Um, my my impression was that uh, Li Xiaomeng from um, Fujitsu was working on this also in the Yocto project and did also some contributions to integrate um, a tool um, uh, for for Yocto users. But um, I, I don't have a good link right now. Generally, Fossology needs the source code. And somehow you need to to be able to download the source code. If you are managing all the time the um, your dependencies uh, with um, with package management, or you have all the um, references to some source repositories which you pull and, and build from, it should be fine to integrate with Fossology um, because then you can just send the, the packages there. Um, that's that's one thing that you need to consider. And the other thing, um, it will be probably super, super much what you are pulling um, um, when, when building and and packaging. And I think one good practice is um, not really trying to understand the exact licensing of every file because um, many files are likely a GPL, pub, a GPL2 license, but um, to to kind of whitelist um, some some already expected results to be more efficient or blacklist maybe things that you really don't want to see and and work work on on that part um, but if you if you would like to have like the full list of found licenses and copyright holders then probably yeah um will be um it will be an hybrid approach where you can can have um, a, um, packages which are obviously GPL two license or with popular license where you um, can can just uh, check mark it with um, providing the LGPL or GPL text and um, for for other packages which could be everything um, you might might feel the need to to look uh, separately into. Um, in, in, in Fossology by manual uploads. I don't know if that's a sufficient answer to this. I would um, maybe uh, maybe I'm I'm taking this question with me, and I try to um, see what uh, the um, uh, colleague from Fujitsu um, was was actually doing. And uh, if you send me an email with a reminder, it probably would help me to get back to you.
Um, otherwise, I'm maybe writing it on. Um, more questions? Okay, interesting situation. Um, thanks. Can you give me your address, please? Um, yeah, sure, of course. Um, it, uh, it, in case, let me um, let me answer this here. Um, it's it's in the slides, um, also for the others um, regarding the uh, address. So that should be good. Yes. Hope I have answered it. <clears throat> More questions? There is also the Slack chat, which I find by far more convenient to to chat. Um, but uh, probably that's better because it's aggregating answers to a question. And in the Slack, um, different um, postings can can interfere. Can for Sol how Phosology connects with SW three sixty? So um, the the basic thing is that. Phosology doesn't do bill of materials, right? So Phosology just scans the package and there could be anything in the package. And SW360 basically manages bill of materials. And uh, it has the REST API, there is integration with Antenna and some people integrated with ORT in order to create records on SW360 of a product and then the open source components and upload the sources for the open source components. And that's sort of like being maintained by SW360. And now comes the point, you can, you can configure a Phosology instance in SW360 using its REST API. Um, so the REST API of Phosology and SW360 will be a REST client to Phosology. And if you have source code attachments um, in, in the releases in SW360, um, you basically can click a button and, and do some, some automated scanning and getting SPDX back for license info generation on SW360. So that's the first thing, how it's integrated and that you can do. And now we pointed out a number of times, Phosology is really good in correcting license findings and concluding license findings. And the way it works now is that SW360 remembers the upload in Phosology. And if you're unhappy with the result with the SPDX file, you go over into Phosology. You will be provided with a link in SW360, and then you can switch to Phosology. And then you can do your corrections, and you reload the SPDX report into SW360 again. And um, by this, you can, again, check if everything is all right with your product documentation generation. And if it's not, you can get back to Phosology, even do more corrections, reload the SPDX reporting, and, and use that for your license information generation. And so the, the answer is you need to have a Phosology instance, you need to be able to access it over the REST API, um, and you, um, you, can, you can use SW360 to send source code to Phosology for scanning, uh, load the SPDX reporting, reload the SPDX reporting, switch over to Phosology using a URL that is provided to you by, um, um, that SW360 provides you with, and that should be okay. I hope this question is answered. I could have written it, but I think it makes maybe more sense to, to talk about it. Any more questions? Yeah. Um, also, um, if you feel like you, you would you would like to understand more details, please feel free to write me an email, um, and I can um, maybe provide you with more information about it.
more questions? I'm wondering how long the session is actually going. I guess it's going 50 minutes. Um, Um, you have more five, five minutes still. Okay, still some time for more questions. Is there? Yeah, it's a, it's actually an interesting uh, situation. So normally you you have like the the audience and um, you can have kind of like feedback on whether the persons are going to. <laughs> go out for the next talk and everything, um, um, every interest was covered or if there would be any interest uh, in some particular question, please feel free to, um, to ask again. Did, um, I think one question, I don't know if that was public, I'm seeing it here in the list of questions is that um, there was a, um, the, uh, uh, during the talk, um, the question of phosology can be hooked up with any LDAP. I, I remember that um, someone was talking about it and contributing to it. I think there is now um, a way of um, connecting phosology with uh, Apache for authentication. And from that on, there might be a mechanism to um, use that uh, with particular other authentication technology. I, I, I have posted the uh, coordinates for that to find more information and to also into the Slack um, channel. So the Slack channel is about open source project updates. And there is a small posting from me where I've also put links in um, for you that you can check. Also a link for um, REST API uh, description file, and that REST API description file could be used by REST clients or by tools like Swagger, um, so you can see the full extent of the REST API. Would be also interesting um, if there is uh, any use of SPDX with other tools, like uh, if there would be um, other persons using SPDX for for um, uh, generated by other tools because we would like to to also work more on the interaction uh, based on on exchanging SPDX files. Uh, but I guess you you kind of would need to um, misuse the um, questions uh, the Q and A feature for this. Maybe um, if you if you are interested, you could also provide me with feedback. Um, uh, what topic you would like to see, which was not covered today, um, to to have it covered in, in some of the other forums or maybe a presentation. There is the Open Chain Tooling Group, for example, and if there would be like interest in, in covering a topic with phosology, um, if that's um, that uh, is of particular interest, uh, um, then we could prepare it probably too. Okay. I think the session is also reaching the end um, uh, towards like 50 minutes. I hope it was very informative um, for you. Um, I, I tried to find the balance between the general information about um, like um, larger features which were added the last year and then new features which were added since the last talk. Um, so I hope it was helpful to get an overview about uh, current phosology activities. Um, again, if you like the project, please don't forget to start it. That helps actually um, to improve the project's reputation for new users. And um, yeah, I think um, can then conclude the session. Thanks and have a nice 
um, remaining conference event. Goodbye.